Welcome back guys, this is Shane. So it dawned on me recently that I haven't been using the Kemper a whole lot and I've seen so many comments come up saying, hey, how come you don't use it anymore? Have you fallen out of love with it? What's the deal? So to be honest, I haven't been enjoying it as much as being able to mic up my amps and to turn them up really loud. It's been a whole lot of fun, but I gotta tell you at the same time, even wearing earplugs, it gets really, really fatiguing. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get on YouTube and just have a look at some comparison videos to see if the tones that other people are getting are more accurate than the tones that I was getting. Now, when I first got the Kemper, I loved it and it was just a really efficient tool for doing guitar tracks and doing all that kind of stuff. And I love it for that. I don't use pedals with it or anything, but I use it just to do guitar demos and reviews normally. But the problem I've had with it is after marking up the amps again, I've noticed that there was a huge difference in tone and sound and just dynamics and the transients, which are the peaks basically. When you hit a note for the first time, you, know, you generally see a spike come up. Those transients were way more prominent through actually mic'ing up the amplifier than on the Kemper, which led me to believe maybe I'm doing something wrong. Heaven forbid, right? Like I make plenty of mistakes, but one of the things that I, I wasn't happy with was why does the drive tones especially sound so compressed on the Kemper compared to the amplifier? And I'd been using the Kemper for a long time and I loved it until I mic'd up my amps again and I went, man, they, they sound really different to each other. How is that possible? Like, it, I get it, the sustain's always gonna be that little bit different, but the thing that was really different was just the transients and I could see it on the waveforms that they were completely different to each other. So it got me sort of like doing some research about am I profiling my amps properly? And I found out I was missing a step. How stupid is that? So when you actually profile your amplifier, there's a next button, you hit next, and it runs the sweep of sound through your actual amplifier, and it captures that. And I was hitting save at that, at that time. I wasn't actually refining the profile. I didn't know that was a thing. I saw it there, but I didn't really know what it was, so I just hit save, and it lets you do that. It, obviously, the secondary step makes a huge impact to not only the tone, but those transients, and it sort of works out what the amp can do when you're actually physically playing it, and then must mimic that somehow. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna to reprofile two of my amplifiers, the Marshall Dirty sound and the Fender Clean sound, and then I'm gonna play them back to back and show you whether or not we can get a more accurate sound, and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts about it. So let's get into it. So first up, I'm gonna do some profiles using the Sennheiser E906 before we go over to the SM57, and I'm gonna leave this particular switch in the center position. So what I wanna do firstly is just set the mic up where I like it, and we're gonna see how we go here. There we go. So it's a million degrees today, and yes, I'm not wearing shoes, so suck it up. <laughs> so I've got the E906 in front of the Marshall, and we're gonna click this in. I'm gonna hook this up to the Kemper. So the first thing that I wanna try and do now is get my sound through the amplifier. Now I've plugged into the Kemper, there's a line going out of that into my amplifier so I can use my amp as I normally would and get the sound that I like just using this guitar. And I think I've dialed it in pretty well. What you're about to hear though, unfortunately, isn't the mic'd up sound, it's just my shirt mic. It's probably gonna distort, but I'm just gonna make sure I've got my sound. And if you do this, make sure you get the same, the sound that you're happy with. So I'm really happy with that. Now we start the profiling part. Now, if we take a look at the actual Kemper amplifier, what we need to do now is go over to this button here and it says start profiling. And then we block our ears.
that is loud and I've got it at gig volume or I've got it at the level of the amplifier which sounds great in the room. So that's where I used to just hit save. Now if we take a look at this little option over here and I'll show you that close up on camera as well. There's an option called refine profile and that's what we need to do now. I never did this in the past which was kind of crazy but I just didn't either notice it or I didn't think it was part of this process for whatever reason. So thank you to the forums and information online regarding this. So now we want to do that, but we want to play a little bit. So here we go. play just a mix of stuff is fine and then hit finish now that should be it so I'm gonna save this I'm gonna do the same thing with my blues deluxe on the clean channel or maybe I should use the twin now nah, I'll use the blues deluxe and we'll see if there's an appreciable difference now between the profile and the actual amplifier but I'm gonna use a different mic for the uh, blues deluxe because what I don't want to do is change the mic placement at all I want to see how accurate it actually is, so let's do that. Alright, let's start with the Fender Blues Deluxe, and what you're about to hear is one part played twice on this video. I've got it rigged up so I can record the same thing twice, or at the same time. So you're hearing the amplifier first, and then we'll hear the camper or vice versa. I'll leave it on screen. Here we go. And now I'll try something different. Let's take a listen. And now over to the Marshall, you'll hear exactly the same pass twice, one on the amplifier and one on the Kemper. take. Here we go. Now let me know in the comments which one you like best and why I haven't done any tricks with this. It's just as it is. Hopefully this will be way, way closer. And one of the things that really tipped me off to why I wasn't liking the Kemper as much is the transient response wasn't the same, which is one of those sort of peaks you see on an audio or in any sort of audio wave file and you're recording, you'll see these transients, which are the start of the note or the attack. And I found like the actual amplifier when it was recorded with a microphone had way more sort of peaks and valleys and, and all that kind of stuff, whereas the Kemper didn't. It was way more sort of, I guess, compressed in a way. So hopefully this has opened it up. I can tell by the waveform by looking at it that it's pretty much on par. So I haven't heard this back yet. I'm gonna to listen to it back and then leave you my comments as well. So I'll be right back. 
All right, so here we go. I haven't heard any of this yet, and I'm about to hear it for the very first time. Now, this first one was the Kemper in line one, and then we'll go to the amplifier. Now, I did a few different uh, takes. Either I butchered the part or whatever, so I'm just gonna go up to, let's start with the Marshall. I'm really interested to see how that sounded recorded. Now, before we do anything, I'm just gonna raise up the Kemper. It was a bit lower in the actual uh, line signal in because I didn't want anything to clip. I want to make sure that they're fairly accurate in terms of their output. All right, so what I'm about to hear through my studio monitors and th you're about to hear through <laughs> this microphone is the Marshall amplifier. Here we go. It's pretty much how I was hearing it. Kemper. Let me go back to the actual amp. It's pretty much on par. Now you want to listen for those high frequency notes and that's what I was looking for. Man, it has nailed it. That's the amp and this is the Kemper. Wow. So that is so much better. Refine your profiles. If you're like me and you weren't overly inspired by some of the profiles you were getting and you listened to some others and you were like, man, then why are they way better? It wasn't anything to do with mic technique. On the most part, I've been recording amps for years and recording amps in the room without the Kemper has been fantastic. But the one thing that I didn't do was refine the profiles. That sounds great on the actual dirty stuff. So let's have a listen to the clean pass as well, which was, I think, here. All right, so there's a couple of different ones here. We're gonna start with the amp. Let's do this. I'm gonna stop it right there because I can already hear what I love about the Fender Tone, that big bottom end, that Swamp Thing speaker has a lot of atti attitude and it's beautiful. So over to the Kemper. Now there's a slight distortion on the top end that I'm hearing on the on the Kemper. Let's see if it's present on the actual amp. It's just it's just off clean, just off clean. Let's have a listen to the Kemper. Yeah, that's great. Over to the second clean part. All right, that was the Kemper. Over to the amp. <laughs> wow. All right, so the biggest flaw, and I'll put that in quotations with a lot of stuff, whether it's the Helix, whether it, well, I used to think it was also the Kemper, but any of these like more GE 300s is they can never really nail that big clean sound very well. Uh, it's just inherent. You sort of sometimes get fizz or it doesn't feel full or it just, it just sounds anemic. And that was something that was pointed out to me by my friend, Dr. Rick, and he's absolutely right. I feel like I've pretty much nailed this now in terms of what I'm hearing in the room. I think it sounds really great. Uh, listening to this playback over my studio monitors, I would get it wrong. <laughs> If someone said which one was which, and especially in the mix. You know, I was recently just tracking some stuff earlier today as well with a friend of mine, and using the Kemper in the mix now is unbelievable. Like, you're not gonna be able to hear a difference. So, uh, yeah, as a studio tool, it's fantastic. I was a little underwhelmed with my results through my own lack of, I guess, knowledge with it to some extent. I understood how to get, get the profiles, but I wasn't refining the profiles. What a huge difference, go do it. I'm actually gonna probably wipe all the profiles off my Kemper, except for the amps that I no longer have. And then I'm gonna go back and reprofile all of them. And I might use some different mics and all that kind of stuff as well. But so far, man, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I think this is some of the best sounding uh, profiles I've made. 
just in terms of their accuracy, whether or not you like the tones or not is, is completely irrelevant. What's relevant in this is whether or not they're accurate to the actual amplifier and microphone tone, which I think they are. So let me know again below what I might do at the end of this video coming up is just play them back to back again so you can have a listen. Thanks again for watching. Catch you soon. See ya. Thank you.